live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back here on theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2019, and every once in a while, we have one of these fascinating interviews that really reaches beyond the, the technological prowess that's available today into almost the human fascination of, of, uh, of work. And that's it's what we great. have here, Dave Vellante, John Walls. We're joined by Sebastian DeHallo, who is the CEO, COO rather, of a company called Saildrome. And what they feature is wind-powered flying robots, and they've undertaken a project called Seabed 2030 that will encompass mapping the world's oceans. 85% of the oceans we know nothing about. That's right. And, and yeah, they're going to combine this tremendous technology with 100 of these flying drones. So Sebastian, uh, we're really excited to have you here. Thanks for joining us, and wow, uh, what a project. So just paint the high level, if you will. I mean, not to be, yeah, so have a pun here, but just to share with folks at home a little bit about the motivation of this and what gap you're going to fill. Then we'll get into the technology. Yeah. So I think you know, the, the first question is to realize the role of oceans you know, and how they affect you on land and all of us. Half the air you breathe, half the oxygen you breathe comes from the ocean. They cover 70% of the planet and drive key you know, global weather, they drive all the precipitation, they also drive sea level rise which affect coastal communities, they provide 20% of the protein or the fish that we all eat. So you know, it's a very, very important survival system for all of us on land. The problem is, it's also a very hostile environment, very dangerous, and so we know very little about it. Because you know, we studied with a few ships and buoys, but that's really a few hundred data points to cover 70% of the planet. Whereas on land, we have billions of data points right. that are all connected. So that's what we're trying to fundamentally address is deploying sensors in the ocean using autonomous surface vehicle, or we call sail drones, which are essentially, think of them as autonomous sailboats. Seven meters, 23 feet long, bright orange thing, with a five meter tall uh, sail, which is harnessing wind power for propulsion, and solar power for the onboard electronics. And then you've got sonar attached to that, that's what's going to do the, 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 uh, uh, the mapping underwater itself. mapping, right. So you can look for uh, marine life, you can look for geographical or topographical uh, anomalies and whatever, and so it's a multi-dimensional look using this sonar that I think is powered down to seven kilometers, right? That's so right. That's how far down, 20, 30,000 feet, that's right. that you're going to be able to derive information from. You, you essentially described it as you're painting the ocean with sound. That's absolutely right, whereas yeah. you know, if you wanted to take a, a picture of land, you could fly an airplane or a satellite and take a photograph, light does not travel through water that well. And so uh, we use sound instead of light, but the same principle, which is that we send those pulses of sound down and the echo we listen to from the seabed or from fish or, or critters in the water column. And so yes, we paint the ocean with sound and then we use machine learning to transform this data into biomass, statistical biomass distribution for example, or 3D surface of the, of the seabed after processing the sound data. And you have to discern between different objects, right? I mean, you showed, you showed one picture of a seal sunbathing on one of these drones. Right, or is there a boat on the horizon? How do you do that? It's an extremely hard problem because if a human is at sea looking through binoculars at things on the horizon, you're going to become seasick, right? <laughs> so imagine the state of the algorithm trying to process this in a frame where every pixel is moving all the time. And like in land, you know, where you have at least a static frame of reference. So it's a very hard problem, and one of the first problems is training data. Where do you get all this training data? So all drones, you know, hundreds of drones takes millions of pictures uh, of, the, uh, of the ocean, and then we, 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 we train the algorithm using uh, um, uh, either label data sets or other source of data, and we teach them what is a boat on the horizon, what does that look like, uh, what's, a, what's a bird, what's a seal, and then in some hard cases, when you have a whale under the sail drone or a sea lying on it, we have a lot of fun pushing it on a blog and asking the experts you know, to really classify, you know, <laughs> what are we really looking at? When you see a fin, is it a shark, is it a dolphin, is it a whale? I hope it's it a dolphin, I hope yeah. it's a dolphin, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so, I mean, I, I, I want to get into the technology, but I'm just thinking about the practical operation of yes. this. They're wind powered, Yes. but they just can't go on forever, right? I mean, they have to touch down at some point somehow, right? They're going to hit water. How do you keep this operational when so, you've got weather yep. you know, situations, you've got some days maybe when wind doesn't exist, there's not enough there to keep it 
uh, upright, you know, keep it operational. I mean, it's a very good question. I mean, the ocean is often described as one of the toughest environments in the universe because you know you have corrosive force, you have pounding waves, you have you know things you can hit, you know, ma marine mammals, whales who can breach on you. So it's a very hard problem. They leave the dock on their own and they sail around the world for up to a year and then they come back to the same dock on their own. And they harvest all of the energy from the environment. So wind for propulsion, and there's always wind on the ocean. As soon as you have a bit of pressure differential, you have wind. Right. Um, and then sunlight and hydro generation for electrical power, which powers the onboard computers, the sensors, and the satellite link. So all solar the power. Yep. Exactly, yep. so no fuel, no engine, no carbon emission, so a very environmentally friendly solution. Sure. So what is actually on the, well first of all, you couldn't really do this without the cloud. That's right. Right, and maybe you could describe why that is, and I'm also interest, interested in, I mean, it's the classic edge use case. Sure, I mean, if, if, the if, ultimate if, edge. If you haven't seen <laughs> Sebastian's keynote, you got to put in, there's just so many keynotes here, but it should be on your top 10 list. So go, go Google Sail Drone Keynote AWS reInvent 2019 and you can watch it, it was really outstanding. But help us understand what's going on in the cloud and what's going on on the drone. So it is really an AWS powered solution because the drone themselves have a low level of autonomy. All they know how to do is to go from point A to point B and take wave current and, and wind into, into consideration. All the intelligence happens shore side. So shore side, we crunch huge amount of data set, numerical models that describe pressure field and wind and wave and current and sea ice and all kinds of different parameters. We crunch this, we optimize the route, and we send those instructions via satellite to the vehicle who then follow the mission plan. And then the vehicle collects data, one data point every second from about 25 different sensors and sends uh, this data back via satellite to the cloud where it's crunched into products that include weather forecast. So you and I can download the Sail Drone Forecast app and look at a very beautiful picture of the entire Earth and look at where's it going to rain, where's it going to wind, should I have my barbecue outside, uh, or, or is a hurricane coming down you know, to, to, towards my, my region. So this, is, this, 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 this entire chain, from the drone, uh, to the, the, the transmission, to the compute, to the packaging, to the delivery in near real time, into your hand, is all done using AWS Cloud. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people use autonomous vehicles as the example and say, oh yeah, that could never be done in the cloud. But I think we forget sometimes there, there are thousands of use cases where you don't need that necessarily that real-time adjustment like you do in an autonomous vehicle. Um, so your developers are essentially interacting with the cloud and enabling this, right? Uh, Absolutely, so we are, you know, as I said, you know, really the foundation for, for our data infrastructure is AWS, and not just for the data storage, we're talking about you know, petabytes and petabytes of data if you think about mapping 70% of the world, right? right? But also on the compute side. So running weather models, for example, requires supercomputers, and this is how it's traditionally do done. So our team has taken those supercomputing jobs and brought them into AWS using all the new instances uh, uh, like C3 and, 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 and uh, uh, C5 and, and, and uh, P3 and all this high performance computer you can now move from all legacy supercomputers into the cloud and so that really is an amazing new capability that did not exist even five years ago. So, right. Sebastian, do you ever foresee the day where you might actually have some compute on the, on the uh, locally or even some persistent so storage So on the locally? small cell drones, which is the, the majority of a fleet, which is going to number a thousand cell drones at scale, there is very little compute because the amount of electrical power available is, quite, available, is quite low. Yeah. Um, however, um, on, the, on the larger cell drone, which we announced here, uh, which is called the Surveyor, which is a 72 foot big, 72 machine. Feet, yeah. Yeah. So this you know, uh, has a significant amount of compute and it has onboard machine learning and onboard AI that processes all the sonar data to send the finished product back to shore. Because you know, no matter how fast satellite connectivity is evolving, it's always a small pipe so you cannot send all the raw data for processing on shore. I just want to make a comment. So people, yeah, yeah. people often ask Andy Jassy, what do you, you know, you say you're misunderstood. What are you most misunderstood about? I think this is one of the most misunderstood things about AWS. The edge is going to be won by developers. And Amazon is basically taking, taking its platform and allowing it to go to the edge. And it's going to be a programmable edge. And that's why I really love the strategy, but please. Yeah, but, yeah no, um, you were talking about, we talked about this project, you know, CBN 2030, but you talked about you know, weather forecast or whatever, your client base already, you know, NASA, NOAA, research universities, you've got an international portfolio, so you've got a whole business operation going. I don't want to right. give people at, at home the idea that this is the only thing you have going on. You have ongoing data collection and distribution going on, uh, so you're meeting needs 
currently, right? I mean, that's, that's right. Yeah. We, we, we uh, supply governments around the world from uh, the US government, of course, to Canada, Mexico, Japan, Australia, the European Union, we, you name it. If you've got a coastline, you've got a data problem. And no government has ever come and told us we have enough ships or enough data on the oceans. And so we are really servicing a global user base uh, by using this infrastructure that can provide you a thousand times more data and you know, a, a, a whole lot of new insights uh, that can be derived from that data. And, and what's your governance structure? Are you a commercial enterprise? Are you we are a commercial enterprise, yes. We're based in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we're backed uh, uh, by long-term impact uh, venture capital. Uh, we've been revenue generating since, since day one, and we just offer a tremendous amount of value for a much cheaper cost. You use the word impact. You know, there's a lot of impact funds are sort of emerging now. At the macro, talk about the global impact that you guys hope to have and the outcome that you'd like yeah, to see. Yeah, you know, like, uh, uh, planetary data is all about understanding uh, things that impact humanity, right? Right now, you know, in, here at home, you might have a decent weather forecast, but if you go to another continent, would that still be the case, right? Is there an excuse for us, you know, to not address this disparity of information and data? And so by running global weather model and getting global data sets, you can really deliver an impact at very low marginal cost for the entire global population with the same level of quality that we enjoy here at home. That's really an amazing kind of impact because you know, rich and developed nations can afford very sophisticated infrastructure to count you fish and establish fishing quarters, but other countries cannot. Now they can, and this is part of delivering the impact, is leveraging this amazing infrastructure and putting it in the hands with a simple product of someone, whether they live on the island of Tuvalu or, or in, 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 in Chicago. Well, you know, it's part yeah. of our mission to, to share stories like this. That's how All we right. have impact, so yeah. thank you so much for yeah. I mean, the we, work we, that you're doing and coming on theCUBE. This is cool. Uh, we talk about data lakes, this is data ocean. This is big time <laughs> stuff with serious stories. All right, Sebastian, thank you. Again, great story and we wish you all the best and look forward to following this for the next 10 years or so. Seabed 2030, check it out. Back with more here from AWS reInvent 2019. You're watching this live right here on theCUBE.